I think that um, people that are familiar with Merlot, where it's smoother, so if you took a Merlot and without the tannins and you added just a huge fruit, fruit component, it's very fruit forward, um, lush in the mouth, uh, people that um, don't want a tannic wine are going to be drawn to Zinfandel. It's very fruit friendly. I think that people are sort of perhaps um, tentative about mat matching it with things, but any barbecue, as um, Harley pointed out, or pastas, it's wonderful with pastas, and we're actually going to be doing some cheese pairings as well. Some, you know, of the harder, maybe with a little bit of a salt contact because you're taking the sweet with the savory and the salt thing, they go well together. As a matter of fact, um, I, I'm willing to drink it with almost anything, but then, you know, I'm a winemaker. And, and I think food pairing is a wonderful thing, but don't be afraid to experiment. You know, try, try your favorite wine with whatever you like to eat and see how it works. Right now in California, it's winter. It's a little chilly, so um, I love to have a bottle of uh, Gnarly Head Zinfandel with uh, stew, uh, with chili. I mean, the soft component, the fruit component, stands up well with uh, spicy food. Uh, so I just like to take my soup and sit in front of the fire with a glass of Gnarly Head. This vineyard is, uh, I'm trying to think what he told me. I had dinner with him two nights ago, and, and he says, "No, it, you're you're not telling the truth." But uh, I always said the vineyard was 65 years old. He said, "No, it's 67 years old," and um, it's really straggly and really ugly. And 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 this is one of those vineyards that um, they actually farmed even into what we consider modern times with with hand type machines and and actually. His father actually still used a horse for a while farming this, and so that's why the arms were allowed to progress and go bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. It's creepy. Yeah. And, uh, but I was sitting here cool. trying to explain to Jim Ferguson what these vines were all about and what they were, and Jim Ferguson's a surfer, and he truly is a surfer dude. Yeah. And so that's how the name Gnarly popped up, and I don't know if I said it or he said it, and we we said, yeah, they're gnarly. They're just gnarly old head vines, and. And so he always says that I came up with the name, and I always say that he came up with the name. It really doesn't matter who came up with it. it it's, it's a really unique way of describing something that's so very unique and, and, and so almost unheard of anymore in today's environment, in today's culture. But it's really great. Very low production vineyard. This vineyard only produces about three and a half or four tons. How are you? But really exquisite fruit, just magnificent fruit. Well, the vineyard we have in the background here is uh, Beckenstoffer. Uh, it's it uh, is Kerrigan. Uh, no one really knows exactly to the to the day how old the vineyard is, but it's somewhere between 107 and 108 years old. Uh, some people said it's all the way up to 113, but we know that not to be true. We do know that it's at least 107, and we think it's some people will differ and say it's 108. Uh, it was planted on or about the same time as a vineyard on my right, which is a James Ranch. And and the James Ranch and the Beckstoffer Ranch are about the only two ranches that I know of that anymore still have Kerrigans, uh, especially head trained Kerrigans over 100 years old. Very unique variety, um, French Rhone variety. Uh, unique in blending and, and things of that nature, but not typically used as a varietal in wine production in, in California. The walnuts. Um, <laughs> there are several things that you'll find out about a farmer. Uh, most of the uniqueness of a farmer is the fact that I always say that farmers are the last cowboys in the world. They're the last true entrepreneurs. They're willing to try anything and everything once. Uh, those are walnuts. You will very seldom ever see walnuts in this part of the country. You're going to drive by the biggest planting of walnuts in just about 10 seconds down here. And walnuts don't grow here. It's too cold. But Kenny's dad was told by a friend of his that lives somewhere else that walnuts, man, that's a cash crop. Really? Let's go for it. So Kenny's dad planted a bunch of walnuts. 
so now they've got this bunch of walnuts all the way around what they haven't pulled out all the way around this field. And uh, walnuts don't do well here. It's too cold. But he was a farmer that was going to, you know, he's going to clean in on it. And the, But the thing that, that's the funny part of the farmers around here, and I always laugh and I always tell people, there's one thing in this town that proves that God has a sense of humor. And that's a cherry tree. Cherry trees until about 10 years ago had a blight that we didn't know what was. We didn't we didn't know what was wrong with them. We just knew we would graze and raise these beautiful trees. They get about eight or nine or ten years old, and they would die. And we're like, hmm. <laughs> and it was the object of every farmer to have cherry trees. But if you notice when you drive around, you'll see two acres, one acre, five acres. You never see an 80-acre block of cherry trees because no one can handle an 80-acre block of cherry tree. Because that's that what we always say is that that's proof that God has a sense of humor. Yeah. He, he gave us the cherry tree to just drive the farmers crazy. <laughs> when they come in and when they, when they produce well and when the crop's good, they all rush out and they can all buy new pickup trucks and new cars and everything because they really make a lot of money. But in, in the five out of the six years, they're sitting there going, well, didn't work this year either. I would say it's it's our way of sending you a little bit of uh, California, California sunshine in a glass, so uh, enjoy. Yeah.